Okay, step one. This is the first thing we're going to do is sterilise. You do need to sterilise everything because if you get wild yeast in there, it can really make a mess of things. So you get your stirry, get your rag, get your stocking, and get your bucket and sterilise them. Now, a couple of ways you can do this. The cheapest way is boiling water. It's not necessarily the most effective, but it's the cheapest. So you get a jug of boiling water, give everything a wash with good boiling water. All right, we're about to start with the next step. Now, to make uh, the rough, a rough for all done, not the... All right, just literally uh, taking the top off the, uh, off the fruit, and I'll get the stocking, and I'll tip the fruit into the stocking. Why do I do this? Well, later on, we're going to need to strain all this chunky stuff out, because you don't want that in your wine. And if you put it inside the stocking, like so, it's very easy to get out. I usually just chuck the stocking away, and it costs a couple of bucks, so put it out and chuck it away, and you're done. Tie it up. Get away from there, so tie it up. There you go. There's uh, my couple of kilos of, uh, excuse me, apricots in there. All the juice has gone in the bucket too. You want all the juice in the bucket. And I'll just give it a bit of a mash. You can use a, a, a tater masher or anything you like for this. Just want to sort of crush it up and try and break down all the cell walls of the fruit and let as much juice as you can out. The more juice you've got, the better off you are. Alright, time for the next bit. Get the lemon out and uh, add the juice. No seeds, just the juice. Now, you need to make, wine needs to be a little bit acidic. If it's not acidic, too acidic and it's too sharp, if it's not acidic at all, it just doesn't taste right. This seems to be a bit bland. So, you need to make sure wine is, when you make wine, it's a little bit acidic, and the acidicness is what gives it the nice flavour. So, I said if it's too acidic, it, uh, it's too sharp, and if it's not acidic enough, it uh, tastes bland. So, by adding the, the juice of the lemons, we're essentially adding citric acid to make it a little bit acidic. There is. When you're making a fruit wine, you need about 12% alcohol. Uh, anything less than 12% alcohol in the alcohol content doesn't preserve the wine very well and the wine can go off. You can make them lower, but you do risk the wine going off, so that's poor as well. Now, to get about 14% alcohol, sorry, 12 plus percent alcohol, we're only going for 14% for this one. You can't aim too high, or you, get a, you need a special yeast if you try and hit 20%. Uh, the wine will get drunk and die. Uh, so you try to want to aim at about 14%. Now for 14% alcohol content, you need about 300 grams per litre of sugar. Now you remember what I said on the side of this, you had to watch out for the... Not that one. You had to watch out for this one here. See, this already has 15 grams per 100 grams of sugar content. So if you work it out, we've actually tipped in there about half a kilo of sugar. Or sugar, it's not necessarily sugar. So we've added into this here, which is to be five litres, we've added half a kilo of sugar, so 500 grams of sugar. Now what we need to do is figure out how much more we need. Now if we're making, uh, we need 300 grams per litre, and we need, uh, we need, we're making five litres, so we need uh, five by 300, so that's 1,500 grams of sugar, minus the 500 grams, so we need about a kilo. Anyway, so I'm just, this is how rough it's going to be. We need about a third of that. That's a three kilo bag of sugar, we need about a third, which I think works out to about 600 millilitres. If you can do it with one of these. Oh, well that's more than that's only a litre, that's too much. I better put a bit back. But it doesn't really matter if you're a bit over the top. There we go, that's about there, 600. Yes, as I said, this is pretty rough. I'll, um, Melt that down and pour it in. So, uh, add a little sugar. Just add a bit more water. Now the uh, the bucket's up to about here. Let's see if you can sort sugar in my hands. Oh, you can see that it's up to about here. So we probably actually need another little bit. I like to make a little bit more than a little bit less. So I'm going to add another um, another bit of uh, bit of water in there. Probably another. We need another litre. So when you lose a bit, which you do tend to lose, you don't have that five litres. Okay, so now we've got it. We've got our um, 
and wipe the protein in the bag, we put our lemon juice in, we've added our, uh, added our sugar, and we've added our water. Now, if you want, you can have a taste of this, and it should taste like a really sweet fruit drink. It's quite nice, actually. And the kids love it whenever they make this, they like this big here. So, yeah, so you can have a taste. Yeah, sweet apricots, that's what it tastes like, which is what it's supposed to taste like. Because the sugar will be converted to alcohol and the sweetness will disappear as it dry, dries out. And you call it dry wine when all the sugar's been used up by the alcohol. So if there's no sugar left in the mix, that's a dry wine. We'll get to that later. But now, there's one more thing we have to do. Now this is one of those things that you, you probably actually, you might get away not doing uh, with, this, uh, with doing it this way. Because the apricots have come out of tin, they're already sterilised. We sterilise all their buckets and everything, so there should be no foreign yeast in there and there should be no reason for this to start fermenting. But this is where the canvas tablets come in. Now we need to add one crushed canvas tablet to this. Now the canvas tablet, what it does is it kills off yeast. It stops anything growing, it's like a steriliser. Uh, as I said, you probably actually don't need it because everything has come from a sterilised environment. We've, we've cleaned everything, make sure you've cleaned everything. Uh, but you get one of these little suckers and you crush the living dogs out of them and then you chuck them in there and give them a stir around. They are hard to crush. I'll try and... Crush one here quickly. Alright, that's probably pretty boring watching that. Anyway, let's crack them up. Chuck them in the top. There we go. Just crush them up. And now I'll uh, give them a stir around, make sure it's sturdy. That's it. That's all we can do for now. Now what you should do, you, should, you can go the next step now if you want, but it's best just to let it rest. You need to give that camp and have a time to work and make sure everything is kept, sterilised. Now. This is where a rag comes in. Make sure you sterilise your rag. Your rag, and you sit there, you go. It's simply a cover. Okay, we're back. Now we've uh, let this settle a bit, let it stop, let it do nothing, no problems, it's just rested. Now uh, we'll have to um, add the yeast. So we get a little packet of yeast, give it a bit of shake, put the top off, and uh, move it on top. And leave and forget, don't have to do anything much now for a day or so. But every, uh, we'll just let that sit, we'll cover it back up again of course. Let it sit uh, overnight and give it a stir in the morning, squash the stuff around again, squash the apricots around again. And that's pretty much all you do, we've got to leave that now for uh, probably a week, ten days. Make sure it's kept out of the light, out of direct sunlight and uh, you know, in a, in a dark place, but at a good temperature, at 25, 30 degrees sort of temperature. Doesn't be too hot, doesn't be too cold. Now one thing I did forget to mention that you probably should you could get, this is not uh, a necessary thing, it's an optional extra we'll call it, is that wine stabiliser. We don't need it for a little while, but if you want to put some wine stabiliser in later, it's not a bad idea if you tend to bottle and leave for a while. You don't have to for what we're doing, but it is a good idea if you're trying to keep the stuff for, long, for a bit longer than the normal old couple of days. Um, 